Hello and welcome back everyone to the next episode on anubhavtrainings.com. In this series of videos, we are discussing about SAP S4 HANA side-by-side -side extensibility using SAP BTP. So by far in the series of sessions, we have learned about what is side-by-side -side extensions. We have built a side-by-side -side extension application using Fury technology in SAP BTP, connecting to our on-prem system using Cloud Connector. We have also seen how to consume a side-by-side -side extension application and building a middleware using CAPM technology in BTP. And finally, in the episode today, we will see the application which we built using sales order API application and uh, which is on a on-premise system. So we have an S4 HANA on-prem system. On top, we have explored and found out a sales order API. And this sales order API we are going to consume from our application and build a side by side extension. So basically, we built both the backend and also the UI. So let's go and see this application which we've created during our training. So first, we started building a SAP S4 HANA side by side extension application and we built initialized a, um, a CAPM application using CDS init command. As a next step, what we've done is we've gone a and added a new data model, which is going to represent my skeleton of sales order data, which is coming out of SAP S4 HANA system. Once we did that, we have gone ahead and implemented the CDS based service. And before we do this, we have downloaded our uh, API information from S4 HANA system. So if I go to my S4 HANA system, and uh, if I just go and check the API from API Hub, there is an API available uh, SAP OPU O data and API sales order. So there was an API sales order which we have used out of the box. API sales order. Yes, this is the API given by SAP S4 HANA system. And we've downloaded the metadata of this. SAP S4 HANA API, which gives me the sales order data. Then through the EDMX generation, we have created a CSN, the, the common schema annotation or file in the CAPM. After we did that generation of uh, it in the external folder, we've started building our service. In the service, we are exposing our custom entity through the CAPM. And then we in the service implementation, what we are doing is we are going ahead and requiring our entity. And we are implementing a um, read operation for this sales order entity where we are now calling get all sales orders get all sales orders is a function which I've defined and at this point of time we are using SAP S4 on a cloud SDK for node.js where I have already implemented a node.js module for S4 on a cloud SDK with VDM on sales order service this is what gives me out of the box APIs to perform calls to my S4 on a system so we use a request builder object to get all the data, select the fields which we need from the OData service and execute it against a destination. Now, before executing against a destination, we have also checked it to execute against our local connection because first I need to test it in my local environment, which is VS code. I have put in my IP address of S4 on a system with username, credential, username and password, tested it locally, and then later on I changed it to destination name because I wanted to now deploy this app to Cloud Foundry. So then we call this and we have got all the data. We can do further post-processing once we receive data from S4 on a system in CAPM. So we can loop over the data and we map it to our own local entity. And this is what we finally return out of the system. As a next step, what we did was we have also added a V2 adapter, V2 OData service adapter here to expose this V4 service to V2 service. Then we have used Yeoman generator to generate our Fury application in our uh, local project in S4 on extension. This is a complete extension, what uh, extension use case we are seeing where we are actually not just extending the service layer, but we are also extending out of the box out of our S4 system, a UI as well. So this is our business technology platform on the internet where you not just extending the SRV layer, but you also added a UI. So both of these uh, I'm doing. So in this use case, we will consume this SAP S4 HANA API from API Hub, consume the sales order data in the application and then expose it to the Fiori UI. 
So this is the Fury UI we have built. All of this we are doing locally in the VS Code environment with complete introduction of Node.js as well in our BTP training. So then uh, what is the next step was we have added a MTA YAML file using MBT tool, CDS add MTA. Once we added that, we have also added two reusable resources, so-called the destination service, where we will maintain our connection to SAP S4 HANA system, securely connect to on-prem system. We've already created a cloud connector uh, co cloud connector configuration to on-premise system. And then we've also added a destination in our destination service into business technology platform. So let me just go ahead and show that. So in the BTP account, we have a service already in place in our dev space for the destination. Let me show you the service instance. All of this we have created step by step. Okay, this is just an overview I'm covering, but we've done all of this step by step. So now I go to this service instance. You will see we have created a destination to our on-prem system, which is secured by SAP Cloud Connector as well. Now I will also show you the destination name and I will also show you where exactly we're mapping it into the coding. So if I go to the destination tab, you would see here we have a destination called CFN. Now we go back and this is exactly the same destination. If you remember, I've used it in, in, my, in my code so that I can connect securely to my S4 HANA system from the internet. And now as a next step, we have added our Access UAA resource, which is gonna be a Cloud Foundry backing service, which is managed by Cloud Foundry with Access Security uh, JSON file. We've already discussed about how to work with Access Security, Access UAA component app router in our previous units in detail. We had completely six hour of lecture only on the security topic uh, with the details. Then we added them as a resource. Now make sure we are using also a HANA Cloud service to store our entity definition as abstract entity into HANA system. And finally, we will build the MTA package. So for that, we use MBT build command, which generated a MTAR archive over here. And then we deploy this MTA archive into Cloud Foundry. Finally, once we deploy this into Cloud Foundry, what we get is a application deployed to Cloud Foundry. So let me go to SAP BTP trial account. And here we have got our S4 HANA extension sales order service application, end-to-end -end application. If you launch this application, you will see the service endpoints. And when you click on sales orders, you can see all the sales orders from my on-prem system are loaded into the Cloud Foundry over the internet. There are right now 26 sales orders. And if I go back and insert one more sales order through Postman, so I'm inserting a sales order. And you can see there's a new sales order 27 which is created in my S4 HANA system, which I can also go back and show you inside the S4 system. Let me just open our S4 HANA system. This is our S4 system. And if I just go to sales order app, you can see there's a new sales order 27, which has been created. Now, if I go back and hit our cloud platform BTP extension service, you can see till now 26. If I refresh, you would see a new sales order is now available, also consumed uh, through S4 HANA. So basically the thought here is to remain integrated with S4 HANA system or success factor or Ariba or Conquer, any of this, any of those systems and build a side by side extension into SAP BTP with the concepts of CAPM, Node.js, Odata V2 adapter proxy, theory of development, human generator, SAP S4 HANA cloud SDK, SAP VDM API for sales order, using Node.js, including the Access UAA, App Router, Cloud Security, Deployment, MBT Build, HANA as a Service, a Skeleton, and this complete approach in a local development environment, which is very similar to VS Code. The same activity you can repeat on SAP Business Application Studio to get this app developed and deployed into Cloud Foundry as a side-by-side -side application into the system. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching this session. And if you want to learn end-to-end side-by-side extensibility, please join our course on anubavtrainings.com for SAP Business Technology Platform. Thanks for watching. Have a nice day. Goodbye.